Hello everyone. In this short video, I want to talk about two different systems for um, uh, defining the tolerance between a um, hole and a shaft, okay, or between two mating parts in general, uh, that has like a male and a female part, and then um, we're going to see an example. So we have the hole basis system and the shaft basis system. And the difference is this, like, for example, let's say you have a um, hole that you drilled for inserting a pin or a bolt or a rivet, anything like that. And now you find that although you really wanted the pin to easily be inserted into the hole and be uh, pulled out, now you see that it's not working like that and there is interference. So what would you do? You do one of the two things. Either you make the hole a little bit bigger or you make what? You make the shaft a little bit smaller. You typically don't do both of them at the, at the same time. You typically keep one of them constant, right? You're not going to make the pin smaller and at the same time make the hole bigger. You try to keep one of them intact without touch. And that is exactly what they're trying to do in industry as well. So if they want to uh, have a specific type of uh, fitting, like for example, if it's the uh, loose fitting here, right, or clearance, or if it's transition, or if it's interference or press fit, then they change one of the dimensions and they keep the other one intact. In the whole basis system, they try not to touch at least the minimum size of the hole. So they do not touch the minimum size of the hole and they try to resize the shaft. While in the shaft basis system, they try not to touch the maximum diameter of the shaft and they try to resize the hole. So this is the difference between hole basis and shaft basis system. Let me first give you an example and then we talk which one of them they used in industry. So uh, mostly. So let's say here, for example, we have a um, uh, hole basis system. As I said, the lower deviation of the hole will be zero. So, for example, if the nominal size of the hole and the shaft is 36, so you see here the tolerance, the limits of the hole are going to be 36 and 36.015, right? So you see the minimum dimension of the hole at 36, that they are not going to change. What they can do for the shaft, if they want to have clearance or a gap, they what they make both dimensions of the shaft less than this 36 as you can see if they want a transition fit then they can make the uh, maximum dimension of the shaft bigger than their 36 the other one less than 36 and if they want a press fit or interference then they make both of the limits bigger than 36 so you see the shaft dimensions are changing and the whole dimension is not changing especially the lower limits while in the base the shaft basis system is the exact opposite so here let's say the shaft dimension and the whole dimension nominal are 25 so as you can see here the maximum dimension of the shaft 25 it is going to be intact while if they want a gap between the hole and the shaft they make sure both dimensions of the hole are bigger than 25 they want a transition fit then they definitely make sure that what one of the dimensions of the uh, sha of the uh, sha hole, sorry, that is the lower dimension is smaller than the max dimension of the shaft. So there is some interference. And if they want an interference, then both dimensions of the hole are going to be smaller than what? Than this uh, uh, 25. So there is definitely always a chance of interference. Okay. Now, Although in uh, daily life, if we just want to do a one-time thing, right? For example, if you want to insert a uh, part into a uh, hole, most of the time you might say, well, what? Uh, we might most of the time go ahead and bring a drill and try to touch the hole and make it a little bit bigger. Let's say if the pin is not inserted uh, without... Uh, clearance then we might make the hole a little bit what bigger right but uh, the problem is what we are doing here is not really accurate and is not really with a good tolerance in industry if they have to change the size of something only a fraction of an inch like this then they always prefer the whole basis system why is that because 
First of all, they all have standard drill sizes, and the drill sizes, they do not change a small fraction of an inch from one to the other. For example, if you looked at the drill bit sizes, they are like, for example, a quarter inch, right? And then they go to an eighth of an inch, sixteenth of an inch, 32, and so on and so forth. And they are not just changing a fraction of an inch, like one thousands or five thousands or something like that. So what they do is they drill the hole, right, to the standard sizes. And then if they need to change the size of the shaft, they simply put it in what? In the lathe machine and take uh, fractions off easily, right? And uh, that, or they make, they have to make a new shaft that is a little bit bigger, then they can also do that as well. Okay, so the thing is, when you put it in a lathe, you can easily control that you only have taken a few um, thousands of an inch off. You can use a, a micrometer or caliper and check that. But again, going from a hole with a drill size to another one that is just barely smaller or bigger is not possible with the drill size they have. So for mass production in industry, they always use what? The whole basis system. The other thing I wanna mention before I finish this video, if you look at the ISOFIT tables, you see that in ISOFIT tables, there are two categories that you can see for any type of class of fitting. For example, for a specific class of clearance fit, you see what? You see H8F7 versus F8H7. So what is the difference between these two? One is whole basis system. The other one is what? Shaft basis system. Okay, so for each class of fitting, they have both of the systems, depending on which one you prefer. But as I said, mostly for mass production in industry, they go with the whole basis system. In either case, you see that the letter assigned to the whole class is a capital letter and the class that is assigned to the shaft is what? A small letter, okay? So the first one is always the whole and the next one is always what? The shaft and then you can go to those uh, tables, to the tolerance tables for those classes and find all of these what? All of these pluses and minuses numbers that you have to add to each one of what? each one of your um, uh, dimensions and get the upper and the lower limit. So you can refer to websites like this. You can refer to ASME books. You can even go to Wikipedia. There are tolerance tables for uh, ISO fit tables. There are tolerance tables for ANSI fit tables. And uh, I have covered a portion of that in one of my other videos. So here is this website that I showed you, and here you just provide the desired tolerance, right? That is the class that you provide, and then you provide the nominal dimension, and this calculator gives you the, um, the lower limit and the upper limit, or the plus and minus values, okay? And again, this plus and minus values, be careful, they are in thousands of an inch. So hopefully this video was useful to you and I am going to see you in the next lecture. Thank you.